In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make this model of the globe by UV mapping an image to a sphere. I got the image from Wikipedia, the world map page. This is the image I use, but there's lots of others there that you can use. With the default cube selected, I'm clicking the delete button to delete the cube. I'm going to the add menu mesh UV sphere and I'm zooming in using the mouse wheel and if you look at the profile because we've got flat faces we've got straight line edges in the profile if I change the shading to smooth we lose the flat faces but we still have the straight line edges I'm going to delete the sphere and add it back in add mesh UV sphere uh, in this panel you can alter your most recent operation we have 32 segments which are the vertical lines of faces I'm going to double that to 64 and we have 16 rings which are the horizontal lines of faces I'm going to double that to 32 so we've got four times as many faces but we've got a much smoother profile and if I turn the shading to smooth even though we've got a higher polygon count we've got a better quality model Zooming back with the mouse wheel, I'm going to start the UV mapping. Instinctively, I would drag open a new window and change it to a UV image editing window, but just as easy is to use the built-in UV editing layout. I'm going to close the side panels and make the UV editing window bigger. I'm going to the image menu and I'm going to open the image that I'm going to map to the sphere. Zoom back with the mouse wheel I'm going to go from object mode to edit mode and in the mesh menu UV unwrap sphere projection. I'm going to drag with the middle mouse button and turn the shading to textured and drag with the middle mouse button and for some reason limit selection to visible is off. I'm going to turn that on. With all the vertices selected I'm going to scale the projection to match the image. I'm going to press S to scale followed by Y for the Y direction to stretch the projection vertically. I'm going to press S to scale followed by X for the X direction to stretch it horizontally. Now the projection isn't centered so I'm going to press G to grab followed by X for the X direction and move it over. To fine tune move the mouse pointer further away from the center press S to scale followed by X for the X direction and G to grab followed by X. It doesn't matter if the vertices aren't over the image. The image will auto repeat in the X direction and the Y direction. I'm going to go into object mode to have uh, a better look and I'm dragging with the middle mouse button to rotate the view. We have a problem only having one light that a lot of the model is in darkness but what we can see the mapping looks okay. To add more lights I'm going to go back to the default layout I'm going to close the window that I open by dragging on the white diagonal lines. I'm going to change shading to textured. In the view menu, I'm going to toggle quad view. I'm going to zoom back with the mouse wheel so that I can see the lamp in all three orthogonal views. I'm going to select the lamp, press G to grab and move it onto the Z axis in the front view. G to grab and move it onto the Z axis in the right view. Hold down shift and press D to make a duplicate and put it on the opposite side. Shift and D to duplicate and put the duplicate lamp on the Y axis. Shift and D to duplicate and onto the opposite side on the Y axis. Zoom back in the top view. Shift and D and put the duplicate onto the X axis. Shift and D and put the duplicate on the opposite side on the X axis. View menu, toggle quad view and zoom in with the mouse wheel. We can now inspect our fully illuminated model. I'm dragging with the middle mouse button to rotate the view. If there is going to be a problem, it's likely to be at the poles, and in Antarctica there is an artifact. You could go back to the UV editing layout and into edit mode to fine tune the mapping. I'm going to select the globe and set up its material. I'm going to widen the properties window. I'm going to go into the object properties and give the sphere a more meaningful name. I'm going to go to the material button, add a new material and give the new material a more meaningful name and I'm going to go to the textures button and I'm going to add a new texture and give that a more meaningful name 
And now we have a texture called Earth linked to a material called Earth that's linked to a mesh model called Earth. Change the type of the texture to image. Change preview to both. We can, this button allows us to select any image that's already uploaded. So I'm selecting my world image. And in mapping, change coordinates to UV. If we look at the field where the name of the image file is stored, there is also a file path. In this case, Blender looks in the same folder as the Blender file for the image file. If I open that folder and I delete the image file and I reopen my Blender file, the image isn't displayed because it isn't there. If I go back to the folder and paste the image back in, now if I reopen my globe is back because the image is there. Now this button allows us to pack an image as embedded data into the .blend file. So if I click that, I must remember to save, save as. Now the image is saved inside the Blender file. So if I open the folder again and delete the file, delete the image file, reopen, And there's no problem because it's not looking for the image file anymore, it's stored inside the Blender file. There's an alternative method of packing the image file into the Blend file. If you go to the File menu, External Data, Pack into Blend file, that will pack all images and any other external files like script text files into the Blend file. That's the end of this tutorial. I'll put the link to the Wikipedia page where I got the world map from and the finished file on my website www.freemovies.co.uk at the Blender channel there. Thanks for watching and goodbye.